boy with his father's help at Indianapolis main newspaper. His co-workers at this job actually did not like him and found him irritating because they said that he constantly required praise and if he doesn't get praise then he becomes moody. So eventually he quit the job as a copy boy and ended up getting a job at Bureau of Motor Vehicles. And he was doing so good there that he was actually promoted as a program director there. So I'm not sure what he was doing before that, but he was promoted. He was known at his job to be volatile and unpredictable. And his co-workers found him very odd and would later confess that he was actually making them very uncomfortable all the time. So he worked at this place for a while until one day in 1985 when he was fired because he ended up urinating on a letter and not just any letter he urinated on a letter that was addressed to at the time governor of indiana named robert orr after being fired from this job he became a complete rebel and he even got arrested a few times one of the times he ran away from the scene of an accident and also he got arrested for being drunk driving his friend's stolen car so he stole this car from a friend and was drunk driving it however he never got any jail time for this so then he realized that he would probably never find a job now so he lost hope he stopped looking for a job and decided to become a stay-at-home dad to his three kids while Julie went back to work and started working as a teacher actually when he was a dad he was a completely different person to what people saw him when he was at work he was a kind and patient dad to his kids so he eventually ended up getting another job as a cashier at a thrift store but he his dream of owning a business one day still remained so while he was working as a cashier he was meanwhile learning the trade how to become a business owner more than a million dollars at the time it would be like three million 
relationship, unfortunately. And Herb did not treat his wife as a wife. He would rather treat her as a business partner. He wouldn't even sleep in the same bed with her. And in fact, Julie later confessed that during their 25 years of marriage, they've only had been intimate five times and they have three kids so that's not a lot of times <laughs> in order to prevent children from witnessing the arguments between her and Herb Julie actually would take the kids for the summers mom's house so they would spend their summers at their grandma's house and actually their store started to deteriorate as well because Herb was very rude to his employees nobody wanted to work for him he was just treating everybody like garbage and so it seemed that everything in Herb's life was beginning to fall apart short time to make the square. I wasn't even able to make it while talking. So this is my favorite project so far. So I'm gonna hide the yarn inside the square so it's not visible. While Herb's life wasn't the greatest at the moment, he did find joy in life by taking care of house that was on property. He really enjoyed taking care of that pool house. He was always at the pool house. In fact, he would always stock the bar even though nobody would be coming over. He would have really creepy mannequins positioned around the pool area to make it look like there's people hanging out there. And that's really, really odd. creepiest things I've heard, I think, because mannequins in themselves are really creepy looking, especially when they have a face. And to position them like that, to make it look like there was like a party going on by the pool. Actually, that was a secret that was going on with Herb. Herb realized that he actually is gay and he is in denial. It was later actually suspected that he married Juliana to kind of project an image of himself to make it look like he's a family man. But meanwhile, he can go out and enjoy a secret life without anyone's knowledge. So Herb was going out to take care of the family's business that was a different store that they owned in a different location. And so he would go there as like a business trip for the weekdays and only come back to his house his family on weekends so his family did not see him during the week Almost done. what Julie did not know is that Herb was frequently visiting gay bars after work after he would finish at the Save-A-Lot store because the store was located in the downtown area of Indiana in downtown Indianapolis, I believe and this is when he would pick up a man from the gay bars and suspiciously man ages ranging from 20 to 
46 years old would suddenly start disappearing from the same area at that time all of these men would all have a similar physical features and they were all gay going to the gay clubs in May of 1993 police began receiving more and more of these reports people disappearing almost every week after being contacted by a parent of a disappeared man named Alan Brossard detective was really interested to find what is going on detective's name was Virgil Vandergriff the mom said that her son went out to a gay bar and was never seen again he was 28 years old This guy was last seen in June of 1994. This is already a year later after the disappearances initially started. But now there's people calling almost every day. Now another mother was calling a police department saying that her gay son disappeared. Also with similar features as the previous guy who disappeared as well. With no trace. He was 32 years old. His name was Roger Goodlett. So Virgil Vandergriff, the detective for this case, was actually taking this very seriously. Thankfully, he was trying to investigate everything possible. He was interviewing people that were frequenting the bars and were often seen at the bars as well and he put out missing persons posters to help parents detective soon found out that there's been more than 10 people missing in that area with the same features similar age within a span of two years so to him it seemed like a work of a meticulous serial killer that would only go after the same people all the time so indiana police actually were not very accepting of gay people unfortunately at the time in the 90s so this detective his work was actually shrugged off by the police up. I've done one and I think I'll start another one as well because I need to have so many of them for a blanket. The police was actually not taking Detective Virgil Vandergriff seriously. Herb 
was actually away for his work trip as usual so Julie actually got really scared when her son brought this to her and so she asked her son to bring her to the place where he found it and both Julie and her son started digging and started finding more bones and they actually ended up finding so many bones that would end up eventually forming a skeleton if they put together so when Julie asked Herb about these findings Herb didn't seem surprised and was actually saying that they're probably from these anatomical skeleton that was used by his father who was a doctor so that's why they were buried in there but the question remains why were they buried on their property this house was never owned by his dad I don't know if he would come over to their house but still very very suspicious so Julie decided not to press him about this any further because he was always on edge all the time. He was aggressive, just scary to be around. And she decided not to try her luck and let it go, pretty much. actually had a little to go on for evidence why these people were disappearing until a person named Tony Harris which was a name he used because he didn't want to use his original name so this is how he's named everywhere if you look but that's not the person's real name friends with Roger Goodlett who was the person who was missing and he told police a story how he was at a gay club one night and a man approached him oh, this man introduced himself as Brian Smart
So Brian asked Tony to engage with him in erotic as a fixation. He wanted Tony to strangle or choke him while Brian is gonna be masturbating. And of course Tony obliged because Brian seemed very crazy. Unpredictable. So then Brian asked Tony to switch positions. And so he's gonna be now joking Tony. And when Brian was joking Tony, he couldn't get Brian's hands off of his neck. And this is when he realized that he's probably gonna die. And he actually pretended like he is dead. Like he fell up on the ground. Pretending like he's not breathing. And this is when Brian let him go. Stop choking him. When Tony got up, Brian seemed shocked that he didn't kill his guest. So now that Tony was aware of everything, Brian decided to drive him home from there. The two men were actually gonna meet up the next day, but Brian never showed up. Probably was too scared now. And police now knew that they should be looking for, or the detective, he knew that he should be looking for this guy named Brian Smart, but didn't know where to find him. So now we are a year later, at the end of August of 1995. The same guy, Tony, was at the gay bar, and he recognized Brian again. So he ran outside. Meanwhile, Brian was inside the gay bar, and he remembered the car that Brian drives. So he wrote down the license plate and called police right away, let them know that he has the license plate now of this man. When Detective Wanda Griff traced the license plate number, he actually found somebody else, not Brian Smart. He found Herb Baumeister. Police approached Herb at his property while he was with his wife and kids there. And Herb was aggressive towards police and he pretty much told them to leave. He's not gonna allow them to search the property. So they couldn't really do anything because they had no search warrant. So they just left. All police had was words from Tony. So they would just have to trust him on his words. But they had no other evidence. So police actually decided to approach Julie while she was working at the Save-A-Lot store. Without Herb. And ask her for permission to search the property hoping that she would allow them, but she also refused. She did not allow police to search until she actually went home and thought about this, that there's been so many strange things happening lately, and the fact that they 
disappeared. 
as Riley Michael. Riley's body was actually one of the bodies that was found on the highway I-70, Interstate 70. And also it seems that the bodies stopped turning up on the highway right after Herb Baumeister moved himself and his family to the well-known Fox Hollow Farm in 1991. So this is where he finally had a place now to hide the bodies so he didn't have to just throw them out on the highway. Ghost activity going on there. 